owns the United Nations. Well, nobody does. It's a non-governmental organization. It's not a for-profit shareholder-based corporation. It's a quasi-government institution. Okay, fine. But who owns the World Economic Forum? Is it the same thing? Do you have permanent seats there by the United States and China and Russia? No, you don't. The World Economic Forum is a private company that acts like an NGO, that acts like the United Nations, but it's actually the creation of its founding boss, Klaus Schwab. Well, the news comes that Klaus Schwab, who I think is approaching 90 years old now, has announced he's going to retire what an interesting thing. Who will take over the World Economic Forum from him? It's not like there's going to be a vote about the subject. It's more like a king bestowing the prize upon an heir. Joining us now to talk about it is someone who follows the World Economic Forum closely because he knows, as I do, that the World Economic Forum and the United Nations is where a lot of these decisions come from that are then downloaded onto sovereign nations like Canada and the United States. What a pleasure to bring back Mark Morano from ClimateDepot.com. Mark, great to see you again. Thank you, Ezra. Happy to be here today. You know, Klaus Schwab is a cartoonish Bond villain. Uh, you know, I, I have German and Austrian friends, so I, I'm, I'm not making fun of the accent, but it's a little over the, it's a little on the nose to have a guy who dresses like a villain with a German accent whose father was a Nazi industrialist want to penetrate the cabinets around the world. Like, I mean, it's if it was a Bond villain in a screenplay, uh, they exactly. would say, no, nah, it's, it's too perfect. No one will believe it. But he really has become that guy. He really has. He is central casting out of Hollywood to play the Dr. Evil, a central James Bond, Blofeld, any figure you can think of. He's got the thick German accent. He's got the looks. He's got the the menacing um, speech patterns and views. The World Economic Forum, under his direction, started 1971 as this think tank. And in about and all the all the uh, all his uh, bios are noting 2015 as a significant year, almost as if he saw. And that really was a significant year. I think that's the year free speech particularly in social media, 2015, 16, everything began to change. You had all the warnings, the misinformation, censorship, mass increase. But what he's done, he turned this sleepy little organization in many regards from decades ago, in recent decades, into this meeting of presidents, prime ministers, CEOs, millionaires, billionaires, Hollywood elites, royal family, academics, bureaucracy, all converging. This and people say, I don't care what the world is. What are they? they don't affect my life. They absolutely affect your life. They are at the center, Ezra, as you well know, mm -hmm. what Klaus Schwab founded at the center of the entire collapse of and rationing of our energy, our food, our transportation, freedom of movement, censorship. They're the ones who are orchestrating and making happen this co corporate government collusion. When you hear things like banks aren't going to be giving out car loans to people who are buying a gas powered cars because it's you know against the net zero rules and they want to encourage or force EVs on us. That's the kind of things that happen from the World Economic Forum, this think tank. And there are already rumors flying about why he's leaving. The hope is here. The, the pandemic treaty meeting next week in the World Health Organization is not going well. They're missing deadlines. The developing world is canceling it. Net zero is the reality is starting to hit a lot of countries around the world. In the United States, the entire DEI, ESG, transgender, Republican attorney generals and, and um Governors are stopping it. So there's a lot of forces and you have a lot of people saying this is sort of the massive pushback, the great resist, mm -hmm. as we've been wanting to see. This could be a reason. He's also in his late 80s, as you mentioned. The replacements for him are just as frightening. Uh, some of the names they're floating about who would replace Klaus Schwab. Yeah, boy, you said a lot of things there. I, I just want to remark on one that you made me remember. I mean, uh, Christia Freeland, Canada's deputy yeah. prime minister, is on the board of the World Economic Forum, which is an outrageous conflict of interest. I don't even know how that's lawful. But when you see who's there, one of the things that is so evident to me is they go there because what happens in Davos stays in Davos in terms of reporting. So there's no lobbyist registry. There's no 
uh, what we call here the Hansard, what you call in America the congressional record. There's no transcript. There's no publication of, let's say, the president's daily agenda so you know who he's meeting with or what he's doing. None of that happens. Now, uh, of course, what happens in Davos doesn't stay in Davos when it comes to the bad ideas they push on it. But when you have Christian Freeland going there, Mark Carney, who may well be Trudeau's successor going there, he's going there to meet in secret it, with people in a safe place where uh, unaccredited journalists can't get to the inner sanctum. So it really is a crypto government, a crypto government, which is why it attracts you know, the kind of lizards who would like that darkness. <laughs> who do you think would be a possible successor? I've heard his daughter mentioned, and he has promoted her perhaps beyond her natural talents. Let me say this. She's no Klaus Schwab. It would seem to me that someone more like a Tony Blair or a John Kerry or even a Larry Fink, who I understand may be stepping down from BlackRock, those are the kind of masters of the universe that I think of when I think of World Economic Forum, not the daughter of a master of the universe. What's your thinking? Have you seen any names bandied about? Well, one of them is Christina Freeland. That's one of the names uh, being floated about. And by the way, I wouldn't be surprised if she kept her position in Canada and became chairman of the World Economic Forum. Why not? Is, yeah. is the Canadian media, is the mainstream media going to call her out and hold her to account? <laughs> I don't think so. But you, first of all, one point I was going to say is you're absolutely right about the secrecy, because if you had the, these are lobbyists, lawyers, companies meeting with the highest levers of power, the donor class meeting with the highest, if you had this without the World Economic Forum and they wanted to hold a meeting, you have to have, when I worked in the US Senate, you couldn't even have these meetings, you couldn't have, you had food restrictions down to, you had to serve basically food no one wanted to eat because of lobbyists couldn't meet with politicians and they had to be, uh, all, all the restrictions and all the, uh, the forms you have to fill out. I couldn't even go speak as a Senate staffer. You can do all of these things, the World Economic Forum, and do it for a week, two weeks, and you can have all the meetings and all the access you want, and everything's off the books. Yeah. There's no forms to fill out. There's no scrutiny. There's yeah. no media covering you and telling you who's meeting who and what's happening. And that's why they love it. That's why Klaus Schwab's so invaluable. In terms of other replacements, John Kerry, very interesting thing you mentioned there. He mysteriously stepped down in February from the U.S. climate envoy. No one could understand it. Right. Doesn't make any sense. You know what right. his stated reason was? He was going to be helping Joe Biden get reelected. No one cares about John Kerry. No, he's not going to help Joe Biden. Yeah. Very strange. He would be a leading candidate. In addition uh, to, to uh, John Kerry. The other names being mentioned are Naval Harari. Yaval Harari. He, right. Ferrari, Harari. He's the top aide to Klaus Schwab. Mm -hmm. He's the one who calls useless eaters uh, the, the, the the unwashed masses. You and right. I, as right, he calls useless eaters who need psychotropic drugs and video games right. to keep us right. docile as the AI revolution comes. Right. Um, and these are some of the names they're they're floating about. Uh, and it's hard to say his daughter, of course, is another one. Uh, I don't know who else. I'm not sure why he's stepping down. It could be health. It could just be he's been there long enough. But remember, he's penetrated the cabinet. Yeah. So this is a very, uh, you know, an organization that doesn't need much at this point. And I think all these candidates we're talking about are all good candidates to replace him in, in the context of the World Economic Forum's goals. They would all further that goal. Mm -hmm.